Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be covering topic 5.8, which is the impacts of overfishing. So we'll focus today on the impacts of overfishing as they relate to environmental problems like biodiversity decline, but also as they relate to economic problems such as income loss and tourism loss. So our objective today is to be able to describe the causes and problems associated with overfishing, and some of those will be biodiversity decline, we'll also look at economic losses as a result of overfishing, and then the skill we'll be practicing today is describing potential approaches or responses to an environmental problem. So fisheries are just populations of fish that are used for commercial fishing by humans. So these are just areas where people are going to be able to fish in large quantities and sell these fish and make a living that way. Then we have something called fishery collapse. Fishery collapse is when overfishing causes a population of fish or a fishery to decline by over 90%. The problem with this is that fish population may never recover. Remember that when populations get really small, we run into issues like low genetic diversity, which may make it hard for them to recover from other disturbances. We may have a really skewed sex ratio, so the fish may find it hard to find a mate and reproduce. And we can even see inbreeding depression if members, of, if members that are closely related are breeding with one another. There's other problems, though. Because genetic diversity is so important for resilience, Again, these populations are going to be vulnerable to ecosystem disturbances because they don't have very many genetic differences and they're not going to have mutations that may prove helpful as adaptations. Another problem is that we may lose certain species altogether. So we could decrease the species biodiversity of certain areas of the ocean. And this is a huge problem because that can have big effects on the trophic pyramid. And finally, we're going to see that there's economic loss as well. So when a fishery collapses, it's no longer able to be used as a productive source of income for fishermen, but also communities that rely on tourism dollars. So people that come and stay in hotels, that eat in restaurants because they like the fishing of an area, those dollars are going to disappear as well when we have fishery collapse. Here we can take a closer look at some data that demonstrate this economic impact of fishery collapse. So if we look at this time period here from 1975 up to 1985, we're going to see really extreme overfishing. We have just this drastic increase in the number of fish that are caught per year, and we reach peak profits of around $325 million. What happens though is this leads to a sharp decline in the profitability of these fisheries, and we can see that unfold here from 19, late 1980s all the way up to 2008, where we've dropped down below $100 million dollars in the value of these fish that are caught. So there's a huge decrease in the productivity from a financial standpoint when we have fishery collapse. So why does this happen? Great example of the tragedy of the commons. Because there are no laws or regulations or there are no penalties in place to discourage people from overfishing in this time period here from 1975 to 1985, people are kind of assuming, well, if I don't fish here, other people are going to. And also there's no economic consequence. There's no financial penalty for overfishing. And so why not catch as many as I can? So bottom trolling is an especially effective, but also an especially damaging fishing practice. And we'll look at it in a little more depth here. It's basically just dragging a net along the bottom of the ocean, kind of scooping up any fish that you can. And you're going to get a lot of the fish that you intend to catch, but you're also going to catch what's called bycatch. These are unintended species like dolphins, whales, and turtles. They're going to get caught in your net as well, and that's going to kill many species that you're not intending to catch. Another problem, as you can see in the image here, is that this stirs up a lot of the ocean sediment, so it increases the turbidity of the water. That's a problem for photosynthetic algae that live in coral reefs. They need sunlight to be able to penetrate through the ocean surface, and when the water's really cloudy, when it's really turbid, which means high amounts of sediment are suspended in it, they can't get enough sunlight to photosynthesize. It's also going to be a problem for predators that need to see their prey visually, and it can even get stuck in the gills of fish and make it harder for them to breathe. But the other problem here, and we can see in the image as well, is that we're actually scraping up some coral reef in that net along with the fish. So this can disturb and break apart coral reef ecosystems, which are super beneficial from a biodiversity standpoint. They're home to you know thousands of different species, so this is going to be a really big problem for biodiversity in the area. We're going to decrease biodiversity directly by accidentally killing unintended species, you know, bycatch.
But then also by disturbing the coral reef ecosystem, that's going to destroy the habitats that a lot of organisms rely on, and that decreases biodiversity as well. Finally, we'll look kind of at the big picture effect of overfishing, and that's a concept known as fishing down the trophic level, and it causes something called a trophic cascade. So over here on the left, what we have are the fish that are normally caught in commercial fisheries, things like the salmon and the tuna. The problem though is as we deplete these large predatory fisheries, meaning that these fish typically eat the forage fish you can see in the diagram, eventually we run out of them because we drive their populations into collapse and either they, they are removed from a fishery altogether or their population is so small that they're no longer profitable to fish. So as we deplete those, we have to move down the food chain to smaller fish. And so we're starting to run out of tuna and salmon to catch. So we're starting to catch more herring and sardines because this is simply what's left. The problem is this makes it even harder for those decimated fisheries to recover because we're now fishing their prey. The other issue is that as their prey, these forage fish that we start to shift our fishing towards, as they decrease, that's going to also decrease the food source of large marine mammals and seabirds. And so these organisms are also going to suffer as a result of us shifting our fishing emphasis from our traditional fisheries down to these forage fish, which you can see are an important food source for many different organisms. And finally, we have the trophic cascade effect. And this can be described by looking below the forage fish and we see the zooplankton. Now their population is going to dramatically increase because their predator, the forage fish, is being overfished, so their population is decreasing. But because the zooplankton population is increasing, that means the phytoplankton population below them will decrease. Now they're the base of the food web, and it's not pictured here, but many other organisms consume them as well. And so this creates what we call a trophic cascade. This idea that shifting our fishing from these traditional fisheries down to forage fish has all of these other ripple effects on other species around them. So we've talked a lot about the problems that come with overfishing. So for our practice FRQ for 5.8 today, we'll focus on describing responses or solutions. So I want you to propose a solution to address the issue of fishery depletion. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future APES video updates. And check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain. Write like a scholar.